After Rajiv Gandhi led the Congress to a landslide win in the December 1984 general elections, he spelled out his plan for a modern India. He wanted to take India into the 21st century with modern technology and economic and political reforms. But only months after he took over as Prime Minister, Rajiv faced his first major challenge in the Shahabano case. He not only faltered in tackling the crisis, but ended up pandering to competitive Muslim and Hindu fundamentalist forces, which led to his eventual undoing. On the 23rd of April 1985, the Supreme Court of India delivered a landmark judgment. It ordered that Shahabano, a 73-year-old divorced Muslim woman from Indore, be paid maintenance by her husband under Section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Shahbano's ex-husband, Mohammad Ahmad Khan, had challenged the Madhya Pradesh High Court ruling, arguing that under Islamic law, he wasn't obliged to pay maintenance to a wife he had divorced. He said he had fulfilled his commitment under the Islamic law by paying her maintenance for three months. In turn, the Supreme Court pointed out that there is no conflict between the provision of Section 125 and those of the Muslim personal law on the question of a Muslim husband's obligation to provide maintenance for a divorced wife who is unable to maintain herself. The judgment created an uproar. Muslim fundamentalists said it interfered with their personal law which had been guaranteed by the constitution. They demanded that Muslim women be excluded from the purview of the Criminal Procedure Code as they were guided by Islamic law or the Sharia. Initially, Rajiv held his ground. He was guided by his vision of a modern India and felt that the law had come to the rescue of an old divorced woman who he felt was a victim of religious orthodoxy. After the Shahabano judgment, the Indian Union of Muslim League moved a bill in Parliament demanding that Muslims be allowed to follow their personal law and be kept out of the purview of the country's civil law. But Rajiv Gandhi was categorical. In a bold move, he asked Arif Muhammad Khan, a young, articulate and liberal minister, to oppose the bill in Parliament and defend the Shahabano judgment. Congress members voted and defeated the bill. As the controversy raged, Congress leaders sensed the anger of the Muslim community. They felt the party would lose minority votes if it didn't speak up against the court verdict and cautioned Rajiv on supporting the judgment. Rajiv saw reason in their argument and did an about turn. He allowed Z.A. Ansari, a senior and conservative cabinet minister, to speak up in parliament against the Shahbano judgment. Ansari called the verdict prejudiced and discriminatory and also said that Islamic law could not be interpreted by the court. Under considerable pressure, the government enacted a Muslim Women's Protection of Rights on Divorce Act which placed Muslim personal law outside the ambit of the Criminal Procedure Code. Parliament thus overturned the Supreme Court judgment. This may have appeased the Muslim community but the legislation damaged Rajiv's image as a modern and progressive leader. Also angry at being used and then abandoned by Rajiv, Arif Muhammad Khan resigned from the government. But the saga was far from over. Rajiv's surrender to Muslim fundamentalists invited a backlash from the right-wing Hindu leaders. The Vishwa Hindu Parishad, an outfit affiliated to the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh or the RSS, which had been agitating in favour of a temple for Lord Ram in Ayodhya, accused the government of minority appeasement. The VHP had claimed for decades that the Babri Masjid in Ayodhya had been built by a general of Mughal Emperor Babur after he demolished a temple that stood at the birthplace of Lord Ram. 
They demanded that a Ram temple be built where the mosque now stood. Around the time the Muslim Women's Bill was introduced in Parliament, a local judge in Faisabad in Uttar Pradesh passed a sensational order. The Babri Masjid had been padlocked since 1949 and the judge ordered that the locks be opened to allow the worship of Lord Ram there. It was widely believed that a Congress minister close to Rajiv was behind this move in order to mollify Hindus in exchange for the appeasement of Muslims in the Shahbano case. Rajiv later claimed he was in the dark about any such plan. Regardless, the locks were opened and the movement to build a Ram temple in Ayodhya gained momentum. Ironically, Rajiv's about turn in the Shahbano case may have mollified Muslims, but the move on the Babri Masjid drew them away from the Congress. On the other hand, for the RSS, VHP and other Hindu outfits, it was the first step towards the building of a Ram temple in Ayodhya and in due course, the Bharatiya Janata Party leveraged it to ride to power in Delhi. Rajiv's flip-flop in the Shahbano case and his desperate attempts to balance Muslim and Hindu sentiments cost him the trust and votes of large sections of both the communities. But it was too late. Mixing religion with politics was only the beginning of a dangerous trend seen in the country ever since, of communal tensions flaring up from time to time. And for Rajiv, it was the first of many challenges that eventually cost him and the Congress the general elections in 1989.